Smith. Hi, and welcome to TechSmith The Forge, our second episode. We're going to be talking about input devices, interactive whiteboards, and have a great conversation with Carl Good coming up in just a little bit. Before we get started, I want to mention that you can always email us at theforge at techsmith.com. Send us any questions, comments you have about the episode. You can also follow us on Twitter using the pound uh, hash sign TSC Forge. Uh, we've got a great episode today. I'm here with Dave McCollum, our education evangelist here at TechSmith. And he's going to be talking to us about input devices. Welcome, Dave. All right. Thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, so let me ask you, kind of get started here. So we're talking about input devices, and there's a wide range of them. But in terms of screencasting, things that people might want to do, why would we want to use these? Great question. Uh, one, of the, one of the really cool things about my job is that I get to go around with all kinds of educators and see what they're doing with, it, with our products. And uh, a lot of times they have questions about, you know, I, I want to record something, but I don't really know what that should be. And uh, what this kind of stuff allows you to do is really keep teaching the way that you normally teach. So if you teach at a chalkboard, an interactive whiteboard, overhead projector, uh, you can really take what you're doing there and apply the same thing on a PC, on a Mac, uh, through a variety, of, a variety of different ways. So uh, again, it allows you to be, it's fairly flexible, allows you to, um, we'll go through a, a list of different hardware that you can use, and just allows you to be pretty natural. So. Any examples of uh, we might see what we can do with this? Yeah, I'd like to lead with an example. Uh, this is the most common question I get, I think, from educators, especially in K through 12, is, "Hey, I saw a video. I think it's on MathTrain.tv, where these students created these awesome tutorials. Uh, how do they do that?" So, I'm and I, I just want to note that we just did an interview with Eric Marcos, who it's his students that are doing MathTrain.tv. So, yeah, it's almost like we did that on purpose. Almost. So, I'm going to go ahead and play a clip right now. This is from Bob. And we'll just uh, play this, and you'll actually uh, see another one of the major benefits of using pen-based inputs. So we'll just play about 20 seconds here. Hey, guys. It's Bob. And I'm going to show you a little bit about circumference. So the first thing you need to know is what is circumference. Circumference is the distance around a circle. In this case, it would be nice the Nice self-drawn call out there. Camtasia now I'm going to show you the universal equation for circumference which is c equals 2 pi r. All right, that was actually a, a, song that helps me a subtle little thing right there. But this is something, if you're typing on a keyboard, not easy to do, to draw a symbol like pi. Uh, once you get into a lot of equations, again, this gets into that whole natural flow of things, you know, just the way. There's a reason why people you know, like to draw when they teach. And so I think that's a great example that shows that. So how, how, were, the, how were they able to do this? What was the input, I guess, for this to make this? All right, so this is, uh, we'll kind of start with our tour of the hardware. It's a good segue there. So they used a tablet PC. I'll hold this up right here. Um, it's a, like a regular computer. I guess we should show that too so you know it's no magical device. Uh, so if you buy one of these, you know, you're getting your full laptop. You can get a pretty, uh, pretty powerful one, do a lot of things. But it has this nice little feature here where I swing this around, and I'm just able to draw on it. And you know, I can do all the stuff that they did right there. And this is actually what they use. Uh, this, in this case, it's an HP, but there's all kinds of different brands and uh, a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I think this is the best overall solution if you're looking to do something with pen-based input. 
Um, there are a couple negatives, though. If you don't have one, you know, you're, you're looking at probably, a, you know, at least $1,000 to get into it. Um, it's PC only. I'm not going to find this sort of thing on the Mac. And they, and just one important caveat, too, they do have a built-in mic, but if you're using the built-in mic, we'll see if we can emulate it. This is what your recording's going to sound like, is just like this all the time. So you want to okay. make sure to use an external mic. But and overall, great and it's device. And not, I mean, it's not light either, right? So you got to... No, if you're, yeah, if you're walking around a lot, you know, it can get a bit heavy, but... Okay. So that's one option. What, what might be another option for us? Okay. Another one, and this is one that you may already have, but haven't really thought about, is an interactive whiteboard. Uh, like a smart board, Promethean board, something like that. I think a, a lot of teachers have them in their classroom and they've, um, they're teaching with them, but they haven't really thought about, you know, there's a computer behind that. And I could have Camtasia running on that, hit record, and again, do the same thing that they're already doing, but, uh, but record it and have a video available afterward. And uh, again, that's really just a, a good one if you already have it. I don't recommend uh, someone looking to get into the stuff going out and dropping a few thousand dollars to start on this. Again, and maybe the other thing is portability, you're not it's always lo fixed location. You're not going to be able to move around. Yeah, I tried to put one in a backpack, and I don't know. It didn't work very well. OK, so we've got a, a tablet. We've got our whiteboard. Uh, what kind of, let's say I, I don't have the money. I don't have the resources to go out and get a $1,000 device or a couple thousand dollar device. What, what are my options? All right. That's a, another one of the most common questions and a very good question. So uh, we're going to show this right here. This is a Wacom, and that's actually how you say it. I just learned that today. So if you're wondering, Wacom. Uh, this is a Bamboo Craft tablet. This, this one in particular is $129. It's both pen and touch. Um, this is a little higher end. Uh, you can really get into this and get everything that you need for about $50 or $60. So they have uh, lower end models that you could use same kind of same thing, but maybe just pen input, not pen and touch, correct? Yep, this is Betsy's. She's a little fancier than I am. I have the, the cheaper model, and it works just fine. Um, so there's a, a, we mentioned that this is the cheapest entry, port, entry point. The other nice thing is this allows you to get going on the Mac platform. You just USB, plug it right into your Mac or PC. Uh, so those are some of the positives. Uh, another one is obviously very portable, although you are tethered by the USB cord, cord so you can't wander too far. Uh, there's one big negative with these, and that is that you can't see what you're writing. This is just a, a blank slate here. So as I'm writing, um, you know, it's tough, especially if you're like me and you have really bad handwriting to begin with. It's difficult. I mean, so you got to actually watch the screen as you're trying to do whatever you're doing on the tablet, and so it's not going to coordinate very well. Exactly. Okay. The good news is, though, that it is possible to uh, write fairly legibly with this, even probably for me. So uh, this is going to lead into another example that I have, and this is created with a smart airliner, which is a similar device. Uh, it's where you're uh, you're writing on it, but that happens to be wireless. So uh, the teacher that uses this, uh, John Bergman from Woodland Park high school in Woodland Park, Colorado, is roaming around the classroom as he's using this and writing on it. And uh, as you can see, he's actually fairly good at it. So let's pull up this clip here. So and I should mention, you're showing a lot of education examples, but this doesn't have to be in the EDU space. You could be an instructional designer, a trainer. You could be doing healthcare stuff. It doesn't, it's not limited just to EDU. This, you could Absolutely, do any yeah. kind of screencast with this. Yep, great point. All right, so we perfect want to go practice. to the perfect practice. Okay, perfect. is that we want to go through the molar mass here, right? So the molar mass of C3H8, mm -hmm. we're going to say grams of C3H8 in one mole of C3H8. Okay, to do this now, what do we need? So that's another great example. You can see that his handwriting is uh, really pretty solid right there. I'm impressed. So um, if you want to get into this. Uh, I recommend starting with this. You will, uh, you should be able to improve and uh, do a pretty good job. Okay, so again, another great option. Are there options maybe we don't know, things that we might not consider to be input devices that we'd want to look at? Absolutely, and I just heard about this from one of our users, uh, Rob Strojewski, and uh, this is something that I'm pretty excited about. We're going to pull this into the picture here. Uh, you may have heard of this before. It's called the uh, an iPad. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, entry point kind of varies. This is a great one if you already have this device, and because uh, if you don't, you know you're looking at 500 plus. But if you do have an iPad, uh, you can get into some pretty cool stuff uh, for uh, about six bucks. Uh, the application that I use on here is called AirSketch. AirSketch, okay. And I also have uh, this is called a Pogo. It's a stylus that has kind of a, a foamy end on it, so it simulates uh, touch uh, and allows you to write a little bit uh, more like you have a pen. So what AirSketch does is it allows you to draw on a, 
a blank canvas here, or you can import an image and draw over that. And meanwhile, that's being transported over Wi-Fi to a computer, which happens to be right here, that Matt's working on. So we'll do a quick demo here. So I'm going to go in Air Sketch, and you won't really see this part, but I'm bringing up an image. And as soon as I get it on here, you should see it on the screen. So there it is. It's a knee. So if I'm uh, showing Matt, you know, what's wrong with his knee, he just, uh, you know, ran a couple miles and he's feeling some pain, say, well, you may be having some problems with your patella. So draw that on here. This is actually a biology lesson. We we're putting Dave to the test yep, here. Yeah, exactly. And I think I got that right. I could name all the others, all the others, but I don't feel obligated to prove it. So, but one of the things nice about this is because it is working through Wi-Fi. Your, wherever you have your Wi-Fi access, you could be broadcasting to anyone on your same network who's connected, correct? Yep, that's a key. So that's one thing we haven't done a lot of testing or heard exactly how that's going to work, but um, it's been fairly good early on. So this is something we're you know, kind of in the playing around with stage, but it's nice that you can kind of jump into it fairly quickly. Um, other caveats, uh, the, the toughest part about this is you can't have your hand resting on, on the device while you're writing or it'll recognize that as touch, so you have to learn to write you know, fairly vertical, but that's reasonably legible. I think I can, I think I can read that. So. so I think the other thing that, that as we've talked, that it, I want to make sure we're clear with anyone that's watching is that you're not actually recording, doing the recording on the iPad. You're actually recording on, let's say, my device here that's connected to, correct? So Camtasia that's would be running point. here or Jing or whatever it might be, and you were just actually catching the broadcast. Yep, we're really turning this into a device to create the content. And you also want to make sure your microphone or audio is also going to be picked up through your computer. Great. Which well, can also be a PC or a Mac, even though this is iPad. Keep in mind that all you need is a web browser on the same network to connect to that. Well, that's Dave, I want to thank you for coming in and showing us some of these technologies. Hopefully, you get some ideas on how you can use input devices. There's probably a lot more out there or things that you might be doing. We'd love to hear from you and find out more what kind of things that you you're trying to do, what you'd like to know more about, again, you can email us at theforge at techsmith.com. And if you have questions for Dave or would like to get in touch with him, he's easily connected with on Twitter. You can get to him at, let's see, is it uh, a, a techsmith.edu, is that That's correct? That's correct, at, at techsmith.edu. Techsmith. So Dave, thanks again for coming in. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a minute.